Hi, so today we're going to talk about the principles of ecology and take a look at the flow of energy in an ecosystem. So our objectives, um, I know it seems like a lot, but they're pretty straightforward. Basically to define ecology, um, describe the levels of biological organization that ecologists study, uh, describe the flow of energy through an ecosystem, identify the ultimate source of energy for photosynthetic producers, explain how food chains and trophic levels are related, and then ultimately count, calculate the amount of energy available at each trophic level. So let's get started. So ecology is defined as the scientific study of the interactions among living things, um, between living things and their environment. So ultimately ecology is the science of relationships. So here are our levels of organization. So going from largest uh, to smallest, we've got our um, ecosystem, then our community, then our population, and then we have our organism level. So um, the ecosystem includes all biotic and abiotic factors. So biotic factors meaning living things in the ecosystem, abiotic factors meaning non-living things. A community um, is all of the organisms or different populations of organisms, different species of organisms is interacting with one another. A population is defined as a specific species of organism, so in this case the, the crocodile population, the crocodile species, and then the organism is taking a look at that specifically that organis, that specific organism and that and how it interacts um, with its environment. So as I said, an organism is an individual living thing. It could be unicellular or multicellular, such as an alligator, and it's our lowest level of organization. A population is a group of the same species that lives in one particular area, such as all the alligators that live in that swamp there. A community is a group of different species that live together in one area, such as a group of alligators, turtles, fish, uh, birds, plants that live together in the Florida Everglades, and the ecosystem includes all of the organisms, so all the biotic factors, as well as climate, soil, water, rocks, and the non-living things. Those are the abiotic factors in a given area such as an aquatic ecosystem. So a biome is a major regional or global community of organisms and they're usually characterized by the climatic conditions of a region and the plant communities of the region. And then the biosphere is all the life supporting portions of the earth composed of air, land, fresh water, and salt water, and it's our highest level of organization. So the biosphere is our highest level of organization, then the biome, followed by the ecosystem, the community, the population, and then we have our organism level, which is our lowest level of organization. So energy in an ecosystem. Um, organisms uh, differ in how they obtain their energy in an ecosystem. Producers, or also referred to as autotrophs, are an organism that collects energy from sunlight and possibly some inorganic substances to produce their own food. So a producer or an autotroph is capable of capturing energy, whether it be from sunlight or from another inorganic source, and making its own food. So a photosynthetic producer or an autotroph captures energy from sunlight to produce glucose, and the majority of producers on the planet are photosynthetic. There are also chemosynthetic organisms, and those capture chemical energy from chemical compounds in the environment to produce the sugar glucose. And we typically find chemosynthetic organisms down in deep sea ocean vents where the sunlight can actually penetrate um, all the way down to the bottom of the ocean floor, so they use inorganic substances in order to be able to survive and make their own food. Ultimately, sunlight is our main source of energy for life on Earth. Consumers, or heterotrophs, are organisms that get its energy by consuming other organisms, either plants or animals. So there's different types of consumers, or heterotrophs. Herbivores eat only plants or fungi. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. A carnivore eats only animals, a detritivore eats detritus or dead organic matter, and a decomposer is responsible for breaking down organic matter into simpler compounds and recycling that matter 
back into the ecosystem. So how does energy move through an ecosystem? Well, food chains and food webs are used to model the flow of energy through an ecosystem. Each step in a food chain or a food web is called a trophic level. Autotrophs are the first trophic level in all ecosystems. So we need to start out by being able to produce our own food. How do our trophs then make up the remaining levels of um, an ecosystem? And organisms at each trophic level get their energy from the level below it. So energy flows in one direction from sunlight to producers and then on to consumers. This point right here, I would like you to star, circle, underline. Um, it's really important. So you need to know that energy itself flows in one direction from producers from sunlight to producers and then on to consumers. So a food chain is just a simple model that shows how energy flows through an ecosystem. Whereas a food web is a complex network of food chains and shows all of the um, energy flow or examples of the energy flow within an ecosystem. So a food chain is very simple where a food web is a little bit more accurate in terms of how energy flows through an ecosystem because there's multiple food chains involved and multiple organisms interacting with one another. So here's an example of um, an, ener well, an energy pyramid and we can see that uh, producers or our autotrophs are always found at the bottom um, at the bottom of our pyramid and they're at the they're at the, they're the first trophic level. Then we have our primary consumers or our herbivores. And then next we have our secondary consumers or our small carnivores and omnivores. And then up top we have our tertiary consumers or our top carnivores or omnivores. And then as we move up in each trophic level, we see our boxes getting smaller and smaller because our energy or the energy decreases as we move up each trophic level. Um, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers get their energy from the level below it. So primary consumers get their energy from producers, secondary consumers get their energy from primary consumers, and tertiary consumers get their energy from secondary consumers. So the rule of 10 uh, refers to the movement of energy between trophic levels. So only 10% of the energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next. And that means that 90% of the energy is lost as heat or it was used to carry out life functions for the organisms in that specific trophic level. So for example, um, it takes 100 kilograms of plant material or producers to support 10 kilograms of herbivores. We'll take another uh, look at another example. So we've got our producers here, and our producers usually ultimately end up producing 100% of the energy. And then as we move up to the next trophic level, only 10% of that energy, 10% of this 100% 100 is going to be passed on to our primary consumers. So 10% of 100 is 10, so we have our 10% of energy is passed on. And then 10% of 10 is 1, so only 1% of that energy is going to be passed on to our secondary consumers. So ecological pyramids are diagrams that can show the relative amounts of energy, biomass, or number of organisms at each trophic level in an ecosystem. Uh, we'll primarily be focusing on energy pyramids. So there's three different types of pyramids, energy pyramids, biomass pyramids, and a pyramid of numbers. As you move up any of the pyramids, uh, both the available energy and the available biomass also decreases. Um, it's important to note, again, this ties back to the rule of 10, that energy is transferred upwards from one trophic level to the next, but is reduced with each transfer. So that means only 10% of the energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next, and then 90% of that energy is lost at that level due to heat and carrying out other life processes. 
So these are some examples of the different um, pyramids. So here we have our energy pyramid, which is where we're going to be f spending a lot of time and focusing on. So it shows a relative amount of energy available at each trophic level. So we see our producers hold 100%. Then our first level consumers have 10% of um, available to them. Our second level consumers have 1% available to them. And then our third level consumers have 0.1% available to them. A biomass pyramid just represents the number, represents the amount of living organic matter at each trophic level. Um, and then again, typically the greatest biomass is found at the base, so we see that here. And then a pyramid of numbers shows the relative number of organisms um, at each trophic level. So you're just counting the number of organisms at a specific level, and there is your pyramid of numbers. So from this podcast, you should be able to describe, describe the levels of organization from largest to smallest and give an example of each. You should be able to compare and contrast biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem and give an example of each. Explain how energy moves through an ecosystem and give an example of a food chain. Um, you might want to use the online textbook as a resource or, you know, look up some of this information online. Um, give an example of producers and give an example of the different types of consumers. And then be able to calculate how much energy is available at each trophic level within a food chain.